Hi, I'm Richard Whittle. I write for BreakingDefense.com. We're here today at the Association of the United States Army's annual meetings at the Bell Helicopter Exhibit. And uh, behind me is the V-280 Valor mock-up. Uh, the next tilt rotor Bell Helicopter is going to build. And in a minute, we're going to go fly the V-280 simulator. So come along. So now we're in the V-280 simulator. I'm with Colonel Steve Kahara, who's going to show us what this thing can do. Okay, well, thanks so much, Richard. Uh, thanks for having us. Uh, what we are, are designing the next generation tilt rotor, uh, we're about 65% built with the aircraft. And what we want to do, be able to uh, bring the simulator to the shows to, in order to show people superior speed, range, performance, endurance, and also agility and handling qualities of the air vehicle. Steve, one of the things that strikes me when I sit in this simulator, because I've been in the V-22 Osprey and in the simulator, the controls look different. They look like they operate differently. They are different class of aircraft. The V-22 is a standard center stick control and a thrust uh, control lever, uh, which has worked uh, as a very airplane style uh, type controller because the V-280 is uh, in response to an Army uh, BOA in order to find out what uh, BAA, excuse me, uh, Broad Air Agency announcement in order to, to start the program. We put inceptors in that are familiar to a typical Army. In other words, these controls are more similar to an Army Black Hawk helicopter. Helicopter, control. yes, sir. So uh, show us how it works, please. Sure, absolutely. I'll go ahead and punch us into flying. There we go. And what I'm going to do initially is just kind of give you, show you some yaw rates, roll rates, because we do meet uh, frequency rates and uh, bandwidth in order to meet level one requirements uh, for the air vehicle in this class. So small, let's see, can you, there we go. There we go, frame up my pedals. There we go. You can see we have a heading hold, which just points to the aircraft is very, very pointable. And you can see the rate is ex incredibly high if you really push it forward in order to do a sustained yaw rate, which uh, actually categorizes into great gust response and position holding capability. Now, what altitude are we at hovering now? We are currently hovering at about 75 feet above the ground on a sea level day mid-mission uh, weight. Okay, and now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is show a little bit of roll performance. If we look out there, and you can see it's a very, very nimble aircraft in all axes. And in that, in that time, we just went out to about 45 knots sideways and then back from zero to out to there. What I'm going to do now is do a quick, uh, quick performance shot. And each yellow line is at a half nautical mile. Each red line is at one nautical mile, because in the simulator, it's very difficult to tell distance and time. So we'll go ahead and start an acceleration. So you see. Just a normal takeoff, we're through. Not coming up on a half mile yet. Hundred and thirty five knots at a half a mile. And then we're accelerating forward. Out through one seventy at a mile. And that's that ability to accelerate and get going and get either out of ingress or egress from the area that you want. It is a carefree handling qualities aircraft. You know, with the fly-by-wire, we're able to, to limit its um, uh, G-loading and its flapping and its everything else. So you're able to really maneuver the air vehicle, quite hands-free control. So we can pull it up. If you look at your right door, you can see your climb angle right there. And we're in airplane mode now. We, we, you transitioned from helicopter to airplane mode very smoothly. Exactly, and with the combination of wing lift and rotor lift uh, back to wing lift, I'm able to convert energy very, very easily. So from that standpoint, we just went from a takeoff, accelerated out to about 220 knots, and then popped up here at about 3,000 foot hover. And, and now we're just hovering? We're basically hovering. We've got about 16 knots of ground speed uh, aft, just sitting up here at the hover. The nice thing is it's very controllable throughout the conversion corridor where we're at. So you, we can bring it on down. As we gain our speed, we're still in the corridor, it's got full control all the way around, so we can control the air vehicle very nicely. Bring it on down, and we're back down to on airplane mode at about 225 knots. Very easy to fly, very capable. 
Can, can you put it down uh, somewhere, vertical landing, show us how you, how you do that? I'll show you a, a very aggressive uh, approach here from sitting, what we're going to take, for example, if we need to do a high-speed tactical approach, say, oh, into this little uh, tan covered area here, okay. which will be good. So we're going along about 260 knots indicated here. We can roll the aircraft, slow it up very quickly. Bring it, start bringing it into, converting it into helicopter mode. Okay, I've just bled off from 260. I'm now a helicopter right now, into helicopter type speeds. So we've bled that incredible speed off, bring it on around, and we're gonna go into that courtyard out your right door. Bring it around, we're well below our speeds. We'll just bring the aircraft on around. Showing no, I don't have anything out back like a tail rotor or anything like that. So we can bring it right on in. Speed looks good. Gear is down and locked. Rate of descent's good. On in and to our landing. Very realistic, except no dust flying. We don't have any dust flying. That is true fact. But now this, that does our configuration does allow one other thing. We can take off backwards, yeah. Right. As we come back through here, we can pedal out of it very quickly, and it gives another option for the warfighter on a direction. Hey, Steve, this is great. You need to take me home. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, sir. I appreciate everything. It was really good fun.